Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover a very interesting topic for the integration community, which is Apache Active MQ. Here is a little more detail of the topics that we are going to cover in this video tutorial. First of all, we will have a basic introduction of Apache Active MQ, and then uh, we will be shedding some light on some of the basic concepts associated with Active MQ and its architecture. And we will be looking into several example use cases where it makes sense to use uh, tools and uh, open source platforms like uh, Apache ActiveMQ. And last but not least, we will be looking into some of the features and some of the benefits uh, associated with ActiveMQ. This is going to be an interesting and uh, quite informative video. So if you are from the integration platform or integration area, uh, or if you are interested in uh, learning about uh, the messaging platforms and messaging options available, in the integration of multiple systems, so then stay tuned and watch this video. You will get plenty of knowledge. First of all, we need to understand the problem statement that what is the uh, main reason uh, we need to look into the uh, options uh, available for the messaging platforms and what are the problems that are going to be uh, solved by these type of platforms like Apache ActiveMQ. The situation uh, that uh, we see in different organizations uh, currently is that uh, organizations and their businesses are evolving rapidly and different applications and different systems are coming into the picture and they are integrating these different systems in order to uh, fulfill their business requirements. And most of these systems and applications are heterogeneous in their nature and they have their own protocol, their, their own semantics, their own logic, their own programming languages and uh, different constructs and different type of uh, uh, messaging and uh, uh, communication uh, protocols and formats supported by these applications. So whenever uh, we have a scenario like this where we have many applications uh, which are clubbed together or integrated in any organization, then it's become very, it becomes very important and critical as well as crucial for the organization to make sure that data is shared across the system in a proper, uh, reliable, efficient, and scalable manner and secure manner. Because uh, no application or no system in such an integrated uh, ecosystem can work in a silo. There are, there, there are uh, plenty of information and data that uh, makes sense uh, to be communicated and shared between these systems. For example, maybe you have an ERP system Maybe you have a DWH or BI systems. You have some other messaging systems. You have your, uh, uh, your CRM systems. So all these systems uh, will uh, require to, be, uh, to, to have a communication channel with each other, to share the data between each other. Only then uh, they can perform the required business tasks and operations in a proper manner. So it becomes very important that uh, organizations look into the options available to make sure that they achieve all these options and goals of reliable, efficient, scalable, and secure communication of data between these systems and applications. So in all these cases, they also need uh, to make sure that they have such a communication model which is loosely coupled and asynchronous in nature because uh, what happens in a normal, typical uh, scenario of a synchronous uh, a communication that whenever there is some information that needs to be communicated from one system to another system, then it is uh, important that uh, the second system or the consuming system must be alive. So in case uh, if there is no connection available or if there is a downtime or if there is a problem on the other end of the system, uh, system being uh, involved in this communication model, then the data is going to be lost. Organizations uh, in the current scenarios with critical businesses, for example, banking or financial systems or telecom systems, they cannot afford this type of data losses. So they think of a uh, need uh, to have some systems which can uh, do the decoupling or loose coupling of these systems and messaging can be asynchronous. So that uh, in the case of such scenarios where there, is, there are certain downtimes or certain failures on either side of the systems, those can be mitigated and there is something in between which can deal with this type of situations. So this is where uh, we see a need for a message broker. And this is the situation which can be mitigated, which can be uh, the issues related to these type of problems can be resolved if we have a message broker in between. 
So this is what we are going to cover, and this is where uh, we will be seeing the role of Apache Active MQ. So if we uh, look at the Apache Active MQ, this is one of the very well-known uh, JMS providers in the market, and it is in the market for quite long and uh, heavily used. And when we talk about uh, Apache Active MQ, this is known as a JMS provider. When we say it, uh, it's a JMS provider, what does it mean? Basically, JMS uh, specifications are there in the market, and th there are different providers, uh, whether they can be open source or proprietary, which are actually implementing those JMS specifications, and then they are they are acting as JMS providers. So when we talk about JMS providers, they fulfill the requirements as per the specifications of JMS. They are compliant to the JMS specifications. And on top of the JMS specifications, they are the tools, or they are the uh, softwares, or the software uh, programs, which are providing the needful uh, functionality, uh, which uh, serves the required purpose as a message-oriented middleware. So if we see in the market, there are many uh, options available. Some of them are open source. As an example, we have this Apache Active MQ. And we do have some options which are uh, proprietary as well. For example, we have another well-known uh, JMS provider, which is TIPCO EMS, provided by TIPCO Software. When we say about, uh, when we talk about uh, Apache Active MQ, we say that it's a message-oriented middleware, which means that uh, it's going to act as a middleware or it's going to act as a message broker. Uh, these two terms you can use uh, as synonyms as uh, you know, underneath uh, they, have, they serve the same purpose. And what happens is that it acts uh, as a broker in between the producers and the consumers of the messages. And all the information that's going to communicate or that's going to be transferred from the producers to the consumers uh, using these message brokers will be in the form of messages. These messages have their own structure, which we are going to cover in subsequent uh, session, slides in this uh, uh, tutorial. And uh, when we talk about uh, Apache Active MQ, this is uh, th this uh, tool fully supports asynchronous, or in other words, loosely coupled or decoupled communication. As I explained before that uh, what happens in case of this type of message brokers is that producers produce the message, they send the messages to the broker, and then they don't care whether the consumer is uh, able or alive at the, at the same time to receive the message or not. There can be different options available uh, in order to store or persist this data. And then come in, then asynchronously, the clients or the consumers or subscribers are going to consume or uh, receive the data from the message broker and process it. So there is a decoupling between the producers and the consumers with a message broker in between. This is a very high-level overview of Apache Active MQ. I'm not going into much of the nitty-gritties as uh, there are a lot of other basic concepts associated with Apache Active MQ, which we are going to see further uh, in subsequent slides. So now that we have a basic understanding of what exactly a message broker is and what why it is used for and what kind of problems it's going to resolve or solve, let's now look into some of the basic concepts of or some of the basic constructs which are part of Apache Active MQ. So when we talk about uh, uh, the basics of uh, any of the message broker, then uh, queues and topics, which are the destinations, those are one of the major, con among the major constructs uh, of any of the message broker. So when we talk about queues, queues are used for point-to-point -point messaging or point-to-point -point communication. So these are just the placeholders or the uh, message holders uh, within the message brokers. So what happens is that uh, whenever we want to have a point-to-point -point communication or whenever a producer is going to produce a message which needs to be consumed by uh, only one um, consumer, in that case, it's going, it's going to use a queue. So queue is FIFO-based, uh, works on FIFO-based architecture, first in, first out, although there are some options to set the priority of the messages as well. But what happens is that the producer produces a message, it, 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 it provides the name of the destination in the form of a queue, and message is sent to the queue. And once it reaches to a queue, a queue is going to be on the message broker. And depending on some other features, which, uh, which we will see later, it's going to be persisted or not. And then this message is going to be consumed by the consumers, which are already uh, acting as consumers or subscribers to the same queue. So in this way, a message sent to a queue is going to be received or consumed by only one queue. 
But contrary to this, whenever we have a requirement for a broadcasting scenario and we want to broadcast a message and this message is going to be uh, subscribed or consumed by multiple subscribers, then we need we have another option available in case of uh, Apache Active MQ, which is topic. So it's another kind of destination on the message broker. So in case, for example, let's suppose you have some type of uh, uh, notification that you want to publish and you want multiple subscribers who are interested into that type of notification that they should they all should be receiving that notification so what you will be doing as a producer that you will produce uh, you will uh, produce the message and you will just publish it to a topic so once it this it's published to that topic then all of the subscribers who are subscribed to that particular topic are going to receive that message whoever are available there is another concept uh, about durable subscriber. So what happens is that we, we will see uh, when we will explain uh, subscribers or consumer that if it's a durable subscriber, then uh, there is another mechanism that even if it's down, it's going to receive the message later. Then another concept uh, that we have to discuss is producer or publisher. So whenever we use queues, we uh, we call the the message produce the one who the party which is producing the message is sending to the queue as producer. And whenever we uh, we use topics, then we use the term publisher for the message producer. So you can use both uh, publisher or producer, but in general uh, for the topics we use the word publisher, and for the queues we use the word producer. So uh, the, 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 the functionality that is provided is same. Both are producing the message. So they are the producing uh, applications which are producing certain type of messages which other parties are interested in. And they will uh, send or push the message to the queues uh, or the topics on the active MQ message broker. So whenever producer produce the message, after that they send the message uh, with certain properties uh, and certain uh, condition and certain header information as well which we will see when we will be discuss discussing about the messages and then the next uh, important concept is consumers are the subscribers so whenever a message has been published by the publisher and the producer and it is sent to a queue or a topic then the message has to be consumed or subscribed by some other parties who are the uh, on the on the receiving end of these uh, message brokers so these consumers or subscribers uh, will be listening or will be consuming the messages from those queues or other topics respectively. And they, they are going to receive the message and then whatever they want to do with that message, they can do uh, on their own site. And next topic, uh, next important concept is messages. So all the things that we are discussing here about the message brokers, messages are the key ingredient of this whole picture and messages are what being communicated between the producer and the consumers through a message broker. So when we talk about a message in ActiveMQ, it consists of three uh, three parts. It has headers, it has properties, and it has body. Headers and bodies are always there, and properties are optional. For in the header, you can provide certain information. For example, you can dis dis uh, decide that this a particular reply to queue should be so should be shared. So in that case, this uh, you will be specifying that whenever a message has been published uh, to you uh, from to the message broker, and then when reply will be coming, it should be coming to which particular reply queue. And also you can have you can have additional uh, header information like you can specify the JMS expiration for the message that the message should expire after how much time. You can have the uh, priority also defined uh, in the header. And when we talk about properties, these are the optional properties that you can specify. So whenever you specify certain properties for the message, then what happens is that uh, on the client side, they can use the JMS selector as well. So this serves the purpose of filtering the messages. Let's suppose that you are going, the producer is going to produce a message and uh, sending to uh, uh, sending to a queue or a topic, and it pro it provides a property, uh, for example, uh, account type as an example. And let's suppose that account type is current or saving. So there can be a subscriber which is interested only in the saving accounts or only in uh, in the current account. So what happens is that the client is going to use the JMS uh, message selector option using this property, and it will be picking only those messages which fulfill the required criteria as specified in the property. 
and then when we talk about the body of the message the body can be of many types including the primitive types for example it can be a string or even if it can be a complex type of uh, body maybe it can be a java object it can be json it can be xml you can have any type of body for uh, your jms message there are certain type of um, um, certain types which are supported which you can see uh, uh, in the documentation of your J the jms specification or of the jms provider the last thing that we need to discuss about the basic concept is message persistence. So persistence plays an important role in terms of reliability and efficiency of your JMS message broker. What happens is that whenever you publish a message, by default, persistence is enabled to true uh, in case of Apache ActiveMQ. So whenever you are publishing a message and if you are setting the persistence property, what happens is that on the JMS uh, broker, this message is going to be persisted uh, into the into the storage, whichever storage is configured. So in that case, uh, there is less of a chance of uh, any data loss, just in case if the message broker goes down. So you have messages persisted uh, in a persistent storage. And in case of failures at a message broker, whenever message broker comes back, it's going to still uh, pick the messages from the persistent storage and continue to serve the messages to the consumers. So this is an added layer uh, or an added functionality of uh, reliability uh, associated with message brokers. And another important thing is that uh, uh, the good thing about uh, uh, JM, uh, Apache ActiveMQ is that it's a, it has a support for non-JMS clients as well using different protocols and different options. For example, you can use REST API. It can it, it also supports uh, some of the protocols like AMQP, MQTT, STOMP as well. So different type of, uh, for example, if you have a flat text, uh, you can use STOMP and you can use uh, other protocols as well. So what happens is that uh, no matter what kind of client you are using, if that client is not, for example, if you are using a client which doesn't have a support of uh, MQTT, but it does have a support of AMQP, then you have the liberty to use AMQP. And if it has a support of REST API, which is available in most of the cases of the clients, be it any if you are building or implementing your client in any programming language, mostly, of course, the REST API support will be there. And additionally, these other protocols, which I mentioned here, are also supported in most many of the messaging clients. So you have a liberty and you have an option that whatever type of protocol or the format you want to use, as a client, you can use. So it it, it provides more flexibility uh, whenever you are going to implement or whenever you are going to integrate multiple different type of heterogeneous systems using Apache MQ as a message broker. So now let's talk about some of the use cases. Uh, these are just example use cases. In actual, uh, you can have uh, hundreds of uh, scenarios or use cases where you can use uh, the power of ActiveMQ and uh, do the needful integration and get the messaging platform uh, ready. But I will just explain a few example cases here. First case is web portal. Let's suppose you have a very uh, advanced and complex web portal where you need uh, some sort of asynchronous, loosely coupled or decoupled messaging across the modules. So in that case of uh, implementation, if you have ActiveMQ as a message broker in between, it can really help you a lot uh, to, to, to ensure that uh, there are no uh, sync no no such delays or there are no such uh, fates uh, because of the synchronous calls rather everything is asynchronous in nature and uh, one of the module producing a message is, is just producing the message sending to the destinations or queues or topics on uh, your apache active mq and then the other module is going to receive the message so you might have some workflow mechanisms as well where you are just uh, producing the messages at one uh, um, one level of your workflow and then there is another step where uh, someone else is going to take the messages from there maybe another application or maybe another module within the application and it's going to consume and it's going to process the message and then it might be producing another set of messages and those are going to be sent to another queue or a topic and then um, the sequence continues and you have uh, additional uh, consumers or producers working uh, in, in an asynchronous manner. So this is just an example where you can utilize the power of uh, Apache Active MQ. The second example scenario is you have order processing system and you have an integration of different system of different flat applications and system within within your order processing platform. So let's suppose that you have uh, some application which is receiving the orders from the clients. Then you are going to uh, just push those orders to another system 
which is going to do the required processing of that order, validating those orders. And after that, you might have another system which is going to do the required uh, backend processing for those uh, orders. And then you might have some, or, uh, some other platforms or system for the shipment, for the uh, payment handling. These are just uh, some, some of the naive examples that I, I just am throwing here. And uh, you can have uh, this type of scenario where you, you can use and you can utilize uh, ActiveMQ as a message broker. Then another example is that uh, let's suppose you have multiple partners or clients uh, which uh, you have to integrate and you have some ma messaging and broadcasting systems and you want to make sure that uh, whenever you have certain uh, announcements, whenever you have certain notifications, whenever you have certain alerts, th then you want to um, make sure that all your partners or clients who are interested in those messages or those type of broadcasting system uh, notifications, you want to uh, use uh, some sort of messaging platform which can serve the purpose. So in this scenario as well, you can use a message uh, broker, uh, Apache ActiveMQ, and what it's going to do is that uh, you are going to produce the messages or you are going to push the messages, publish the messages to the topics, and then all those parties which are interested in those messages are going to receive the messages from the respective topics or queues, and uh, then they are going getting notified. So this is another example scenario where you can use Apache MQ. Another example is related to Internet of Things IoT. So uh, in case of IoT, mostly uh, it's preferred to use some streaming systems like Apache Kafka, but still uh, you can utilize Apache Active MQ as well. And Active MQ can be used in this scenario. So what happens is that uh, IoT devices are going to send. Uh, sensor-based notifications or whatever information they are communicating. It's going to be published since it's Apache ActiveMQ does support different protocols. So in that case, using whatever protocol is supported, those messages are going to be published or pushed towards the JMS destinations, topics or queues, and then going to be received by the receiving it. So this is another scenario where you can utilize Apache ActiveMQ. So basically, the core of all the discussion on this slide is that any asynchronous processing system that you want to implement or you want to have in your organization, you can use Apache Active MQ for that purpose. So whenever you have a requirement of asynchronous communication model, first, uh, first thing that should come into your mind is that you need a message broker. And whenever it comes in your mind that you need a message broker, then the second uh, uh, filter comes in your mind or decision uh, item comes in your mind is whether you want uh, an open source or you want a, a proprietary system. And whenever you say that you need a pro uh, open source uh, message broker, then Apache Active MQ is going to be one of the major players in the market that you will look, take into consideration. So now uh, that we have covered uh, some of the basic concepts as well as uh, the use cases uh, of Apache ActiveMQ, now let's uh, look into some of the benefits that are associated uh, with the Apache ActiveMQ. Uh, like any other message broker, Apache ActiveMQ just uh, does come with a lot of features and options available. And there might be some uh, shortcomings as well associated with any of these uh, this type of products but here we are just going to cover the benefits or the uh, other good things that are associated uh, with apache active mq the first thing is loose coupling as i explained before that uh, in this case uh, of uh, having a message broker in between you have a mediator or you have a broker in between the producers and consumers and producers and consumers are no more tightly coupled so producers can continue with their work uh, once they have produced a message and sent it to that broker. They don't care and they don't wait for uh, the consumer side to consume the message. And this is contrary to a typical point-to-point -point, uh, direct communication model where you have a producer producing a message and sending a message in a synchronous manner to the consumer. Consumer is processing or uh, receiving the message. Producer's thread is in a wait state. And it waits uh, for the consumer and it will receive a response or acknowledgement from the consumer or else it will uh, time out. So that is a typical uh, synchronous uh, application messaging behavior. But here you have a loose coupling between the producer and consumer, which greatly improves the performance because there can be scenarios where either of the two, like your producer or your consumer, they might be slow. They might have certain uh, slowness for any of the reasons, be it network reasons, be it application 
reasons or be it some other scenarios uh, because the data or the messages that are being sent from the producer to the consumer might be uh, the, the speed or the throughput on either side might be higher so in those scenarios uh, if you are uh, if you are using a loose coupled uh, broker based scenario then you, you you don't have a problem because you have a broker in between which is going to handle these type of things messages are going to be persisted there and your consumer is going to consume the message as, at its own speed without having any impact on the producer side. The second uh, good thing, uh, benefit associated with, <clears throat> excuse me, for uh, Apache Active MQ is that it supports for multiple formats and multiple protocols. I explained below before that you have liberty to use uh, different uh, available protocol options as well as you can use REST API. So you don't uh, have uh, to tightly uh, force uh, all of your clients or all of your producers that you have to use a particular XYZ uh, protocol. No, they have liberty, they have option, they can use different protocols and then they still they, they are able to integrate themselves with the message broker. The third thing is that uh, reliability is one of the major uh, positive features associated with ActiveMQ. So what happens is that you have the option of persistence so at the broker level, you achieve reliability by two means. Either you can have a cluster of brokers, or you can have multiple bro brokers in FT or LB mode. So you have a fault tolerance uh, using uh, this type of uh, uh, horizontal scaling. And, but at the same time, the message persistence does provide you another uh, layer of uh, reliability because whatever messages producers are producing and if, these, if they are sent with a persistence uh, property set to true, then messages will be stored into a persistent storage. So in worst case scenario, even if you have a single broker and if it goes down, the messages which are persistent in the persistent storage will be still there. And whenever message broker goes up again, it's going to continue uh, serving uh, and sending those messages to the clients. And the second option is the, the option available for JMS specifications, which is durability of the subscription. So what happens is that normally, whenever uh, a message is sent to a topic, and only those subscribers which are live at that time will be receiving the messages, and any of the subscriber for that topic who is not up at that particular time will, will, will lose the message and will not receive the message. But if we have a durable subscriber, so whenever we are creating a subscriber, if we set it as durable subscriber, then for that for durable subscriber, uh, message broker will hold the message. And even uh, if it's down, one of, once this uh, subscriber comes back and it's live, it's still going to receive the message. So it's an added uh, reliability mechanism that you can enforce in the scenarios where you have um, highly critical data, which you cannot afford uh, losing. The next thing is that uh, this uh, ActiveMQ uh, just supports, provides scalability options. So you can have uh, vertical as well as horizontal scaling. When we say horizontal scaling, it means you can have a clustering, you can have multiple JMS brokers. And when we say vertical scaling, of course, uh, whenever you have, a, you have a broker or you have a set of brokers, you can always uh, increase the, the overall uh, CPU, memory, and whatever resources they are using and you can fine tune it uh, to make sure that uh, it is able to perform well even if without increasing additional brokers into the cluster so these are some of the benefits that are associated with active mq of course uh, there are many other benefits as well uh, at, the, at, at, at different levels that you can uh, think of uh, when we talk about active mq but i just cover some of the major items so that's it from this video tutorial and uh, I did not go into much of the nitty gritties as uh, uh, I will put the uh, rest of the things up to you. If you are interested to learn more, you can refer to my uh, website tutorialspdr.com uh, for not only about MQ, but also about Apache Kafka as well as Tipco, MuleSoft and other integration platforms. You can learn and you can go through different video and text tutorials there and uh, you can get back to me if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as i will be uploading more videos practical videos about apache uh, active mq as well as other technologies in future thank you very much